oh my god you're muslim oh your mom does your mom wear that scarf on her head haha <laughs> and they're laughing that's the exact experience i had one of my really close friends of faith actually converted alhamdulillah Inshallah. a couple years ago uh, a couple months ago so maybe he's playing 12 hours a day why try to talk to the kid see what he enjoys about it see what maybe if there's an issue maybe he's like oh i don't like to go to school i don't like to go out so if i'm playing a game that i'm just kind of playing going through the motions i don't need to like focus and talk to people i'll throw in a video and you know these last couple of years that's where i came across your channel and all the da'wah videos now that's what i watch whenever i have a chance da'wah videos you realize like so many things oh my god i'm so dumb that i thought i was right when my mom said this and i didn't you know i've never like alhamdulillah to this day never smoke drink anything I've, so I, that's amazing that, bro and i remember i tweeted like inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun and like the response from all the muslim kids was just really like people were like shocked but i never publicly spoke about it um and it, you know for a couple reasons it goes all the way back to when i first joined phase as a 14 year old no, that's a gen, yeah. <laughs> Asalaamu Alaikum guys and welcome to another episode of Smile to Jannah. I'm sure some of you will be familiar with this individual here, Mr. Faze Apex. I made a video about him not so long ago about, mashallah, him being from the gaming world, a very big element of the gaming world, might I add. And how, mashallah, he took a change or rather a step in the, in, in the Islamic, in the spiritual, in the religious direction. And mashallah, how he shared that with his followers and some of the support that he got and some of the backlash he got as well. So, of course, the young uh, gamers amongst you will be very familiar with the FaZe clan. And uh, yeah. Jazakallah khair, brother Faze Apex, for joining us here in the uh, yeah. Smile to Jannah world as it is. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, like I told you in DMs, I've been watching you and in, in, you know all your, your friends in that group of videos for a long time now. So I appreciate it. It was nice to see. I appreciate the video and the kind words and all the comments. It was really nice. So I'm glad. I'm glad, inshallah, that it's, you know, some young, younger fans of ours and our audience in the gaming world are starting to you know feel happy to see other muslims and stuff like that and we'll get into it but that's you know something that that's my goal obviously here and that's why i'm excited to come on and talk with you inshallah yeah jazakallah bro that means that means a lot mashallah and it just goes to show sometimes just making videos in your living room as long as it's sincere mashallah it's it's up to allah allah can uh, spread it to whomever he wants honor comes from Allah, disgrace comes from Allah, and it just goes to show, you know, the only thing uniting us is La ilaha illallah, and yeah. you all the way there, mashallah, with with that setup and <laughs> and, me, and me with that, <laughs> with a couple of books and a few RGVs in the back. <laughs> I like yours is a better, more simple, more simple. Mashallah, mashallah. No, I appreciate that, bro. I appreciate uh, that. But for you. for some people. That are living under a rock or for some people <laughs> that uh, maybe are not too familiar with the gaming scene of course uh, uh, maybe you might know we started a subsidiary channel as well called gaming to jannah um mm -hmm. obviously i don't know you know we might be too <laughs> high you know <laughs> 10,000 subscribers bro i think yeah uh, mashallah we're rolling in there <laughs> <laughs> that's good mashallah mashallah so, no that's nice <laughs> so alhamdulillah uh so bro let us know the viewers that don't know a bit of background about yourself and of course about you know your, your company the phase clan online my name is phase apex i'm one of the owners of phase clan uh we're one of the largest gaming organizations in the world uh, if you've heard the term esports, uh, it's basically competitive gaming, not just online, but across the world. So we have like seven teams, I think, that compete in different games, like Call of Duty, Counter-Strike, um, Rainbow Six. There's like a bunch of games that some of you may be familiar with. So we have professional teams that compete um, under the phase name, just like you'd see like a, you know, I'm going to, I was going to say soccer, but you guys are a lot of European audience. So I have to say a football team, like, oh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. like Real Madrid or something like that. Same thing. We got teams just like they have a soccer team and a basketball team. 
we got teams in different games. What's and, this uh, uh, soccer that you keep saying? Oh, here? sorry, What's... football. <laughs> in that, yeah. Oh man, I tried to I tried to protect myself and I still messed up. <laughs> yeah, but um, it's yeah. So we have teams Alhamdulillah, and then we also have a brand that has been built on YouTube. So we have a bunch of YouTubers just like myself who have been in the team and we've created like a group online similar to you and Muhammad Hijab and Ali Dawa. The same way you guys are like a group. We started gaming uh, in 2010 together as a group. Not all of us. But I joined FaZe Clan in like 2011. So I've been in for 10 years now. The brand has existed for 11 years. We started on YouTube just playing Call of Duty, making highlight videos. Um, and then it turned into other videos and other videos. Then we moved into a house together, alhamdulillah, which we'll get into. And then from there, we started getting these professional teams I'm talking about and all of that. So now we're just one of the gaming organizations leading the scene, inshallah. And, and yeah, like you said, alhamdulillah, we're, I don't know, things are moving so fast, alhamdulillah, but it's been, it's been very amazing, alhamdulillah. Oh, I, I didn't know that you guys were uh, in, in one house. So like you've got the Sidemen and Team 10, exactly. you guys have your own house as well, yeah? Exactly. So um, oh, wow. we were in 2014, we moved into a house together. So it was eight, seven years ago now in November is when I moved in. So um, we started off in, like I said, 2011. So the first two, three years, we were all at our house, you know, our houses. I, I was in California. One is in New York. One's in Canada. One's in Boston. One's in Sweden. All over the world. Again, we'll probably get into that a little more later, but we all decided to move into a house together. Um, when I was 18, I kind of paused school, moved to New York, we moved to a house together, six of us. And then, alhamdulillah, it was like a kind of a risky move, but like it would turned out to be the best decision of our lives. Alhamdulillah. From there, our, our brand just went to the next level. We started making videos together. We were one of like the first houses like that that existed. Um, Sidemen, mashallah, oh my gosh, those guys are still going so strong. I don't know how they do it. I, alhamdulillah, I've gotten the opportunity to meet them a couple of times and talk to them. They're the nicest people. I know you guys probably all love them, all the kids watching. They're as genuine as you see online, so mashallah. But they are on the next level. I would look up to them a lot, mashallah. But yeah, we, we were in the house for a couple of years, and then we just kept building the brand, bringing in other YouTubers, bringing in other people, alhamdulillah. So. Oh, wow. So even now, um, you guys are in, in the house together, yeah? So not me. I moved out. Um, once we moved back to Cal, we, we were in New York for a year and a half, about two years. And then we moved to California. I grew up here in California around my family. So I kind of moved back around my family. Nice. I'm like an hour away from everyone. So we have offices up in Los Angeles. I go up there, here and there. Some of the guys live together. Everyone's kind of spread out a little bit, but we're all connected over obviously this brand together and we're all brothers now and alhamdulillah like i've gotten very close to all of them so um yeah we're all in this area in california now most so, of us not everyone but most of us yeah so so with the face clan i mean uh, a lot of people were surprised that um you were muslim uh, to be honest it, are there any other surprises of uh, other face clan members we did see so, one I know FaZe yeah. Rug did po post uh, a few things when the whole Palestine thing was going on. So. Yeah. So, okay. So first off, alhamdulillah, like, uh, I don't know where to start. But first off, in terms of surprises, now there are two other FaZe members that are Muslim. Alhamdulillah. No, three. Okay. Two that um, just got recruited. And uh, we did this challenge called Phase 5, which is like the open recruitment challenge. We had like 200,000 people, over 10,000 people, alhamdulillah, submit. We ended up picking five winners to join. So one of them is from Saudi Arabia. His name is Faiz Virus. He's Muslim, alhamdulillah. And another virus. Guy named virus, yeah. And then another guy named Faxity. I don't know what that means. Yeah, not, not the coronavirus, but a different, <laughs> a different oh, virus. This video demonetized. Oh, now, block oh, it. Thanks so no, I, for, I have stopped making YouTube videos. I forget the rules. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, but alhamdulillah, and another guy is Muslim as well. And actually... I'm not going to say it out loud for him publicly, but yeah, course, by name, because he hasn't. But another one of my really close friends of face actually converted, alhamdulillah, Inshallah. a couple of years ago, uh, a couple of months ago. So okay. alhamdulillah, and I, there's a couple like there's a lot of employees. Actually, the guy that built this room is a Muslim guy that we hired. Alhamdulillah, it's, it's beautiful. Honestly, it's my favorite thing ever is coming across Muslims. Now in phase, there's like five or six employees and a couple of phase members. It's really nice. It's really nice. Alhamdulillah. But so, uh, yeah, sorry, sorry. But what you also said about people being surprised that I'm Muslim, I want to, it's interesting. I, I kind of want to, if you don't mind, go into that a little bit. No, no, because, go ahead. Um, yeah, yeah. 
that was another reason I was like, I want to kind of go on there and talk a little bit about it because I saw a lot of people saying like, oh, like, alhamdulillah, he got guided after all this time and stuff like that. And of course, uh, you know, alhamdulillah, we're always being guided and we we'll always have room to improve. But it's just interesting um, to see. Alhamdulillah, for me, I've always practiced alhamdulillah since I was young. I've always been the same level of a Muslim I am now trying to pray every day, of course, and be the best Muslim I could be. I think for many years, though, I hit it, of course, not not. That's why people were surprised. Uh, a lot of people kind of. Not a lot, but there were some people speculating back in the day. People would make videos saying, I think he's Muslim because they saw like a keychain of mine that had a Palestinian flag on it, stuff like that. But I never publicly spoke about it. Um, and, it, you know, for a couple of reasons, it goes all the way back to when I first joined FaZe as a 14 year old. Um, one of the main the, the main guy in FaZe, and I'm not going to say his name either, but let's just say you're a little young football player not soccer football player and you're going <laughs> and you join Barcelona or you join Real Madrid back in the day when they mm -hmm. had Messi and Ronaldo. And the second you join so excited, either Messi or Ronaldo starts just hammering you. Oh my God, you're Muslim. Oh, your mom, does your mom wear that scarf on her head? Ha <laughs> ha. And they're laughing. That's mm -hmm. the exact experience I had. So as a 14 year old, first time experiencing anything like that, it kind of like crushed me. Cause it was like the guy I looked up to too. Right. So it kind of scarred me from that day on. I didn't tell anyone my name. I didn't talk about myself at all. Um, Cause I was like, I don't know. I just got like, you know, berated by him. So I was like, I don't want to talk about this, whatever. I'm just going to go over the years too. You know, there's so much racism on the internet, especially in America. I'm just going to be honest. A lot of towards Muslims, of course, all around the world. But as like a 14 year old, 15 year old, 16 year old, it really like worried me you know, to get that kind of attention and get that. And also there was a lot of people in our community that were hacking at the time, hacking Twitter. I got my whole life hacked at some point with my email, my Twitter, and my all my accounts got hacked at one point when I was like 15. All these things collectively just made me a very private person about my life. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah, I still am. I never share any information about my family. Very private. But when it comes to being Muslim and, and Palestinian, those are two things that I also didn't really talk about. Until like, um, basically, the older I got, obviously, the more I started being more proud, of course, but also realizing that these things don't matter. What people say don't matter. Even the hackers, I ended up figuring out how to kind of protect my accounts more and stuff. So like, as I got older, I started talking about it a little more and more when I'd meet people and stuff. I wasn't afraid to talk about it, but just publicly. And then honestly, I remember the turning point. This is why it's, I wanted to bring it up. It's very interesting. But like, but the... I would tweet Eid Mubarak and stuff a couple times here and there. So people were always kind of like suspicious, whatever. But I remember like, un unfortunately, but like when that shooting happened in um, New Zealand at the Masjid, mm -hmm. I remember from that day, it like that day that happened in that video, I horrible video, um, like really just made me, I don't know, it just changed my perspective on everything when it comes to this. And I remember I tweeted like, Inna lillahi wa inna lillahi rajiun, and like the response from all the Muslim kids was just really like, people were like shocked. And then I just started tweeting a little more, posting a little more. And then this past year when all that stuff was happening in Palestine, it was another moment where I was like, I'm proud to be Palestinian. Obviously I have this, you know, this um, obligation from Allah that I have to use my plot. I have to spread, you know, the truth when it comes to Islam and I have to stand up against like oppression when it comes to Palestine. So I just, I just decided I'm not, gonna like hide it anymore and i kind of just started posting more and every time i'd post there'd be so many little muslims uh little muslims so many young muslim kids that would be so happy about it and i would just get so many nice tweets and messages from muslim muslim and arab kids and i just like put myself back when i was 14 and when i was the one kid and i was getting you know made fun of not really i'm not gonna be dramatic like i was getting bullied about it but that one situation and me being afraid to talk about it I hate that that existed. And I'm like, okay, if I can kind of change younger Muslims perspective and make them proud, feel more proud of being Muslim and Palestinian or wherever they're from and not be afraid to speak against it, then like, that's what I want to do. And Habib, the UFC fighter did that for me as well. Like he's another main reason, honestly, seeing him just made me feel even more proud to be Muslim. And I'm like, okay, I'm looking at him and I'm like, I realize, like, alhamdulillah, I don't put myself on the same level of him at all, but I realize that there are, 
kids out there that look at me in the same light. So I'm just kind of like, I have to, you know, I have to, I have no choice. I have to, I have to speak a little more on it. So that's what happened. And it, so now people will think like, I just, I don't know where it started to become a Muslim and praying and stuff like, Alhamdulillah, I always trying to get better, but it's just more of like something I didn't talk about publicly, but uh, yeah, that, that's a little clarification on that, but definitely now, like, you know, as confident as I am speaking about, it, it's the best thing in my life Alhamdulillah, to be Muslim and to be where I'm from. So like, I don't, there's no reason to hide it. It's the thing I'm most proud about now, Alhamdulillah. So that's, that's why I've seen a lot more posts from me and yeah, Alhamdulillah. Inshallah. So you said um, it was the New Zealand attack and then mashallah Habib, um, so would you say that you, your, your practicing level increased or has it been the same, but just behind the scenes? No, Alhamdulillah, I think it's been the same, honestly. Um, I'm always trying to learn. On, I mean, I guess there's like a few things I've done. Not Honestly, not really. My practicing level has stayed the same. I've just been trying to learn Arabic recently a lot more so I can understand more of the Quran, obviously. Um, stuff like that, small habits, small things I'm trying to learn, but I've alhamdulillah, since I can remember, I've, I don't remember a time where I didn't pray five times a day, or at least obviously try to pray five times a day. And I didn't, you know, I've never like, alhamdulillah to this day, never smoke, drink anything. I've like, alhamdulillah. So I, that's amazing, not, bro. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I've never smoked. Yeah, and when I was younger, hookah here and there, maybe I yeah. should expose myself. But other than that, like, alhamdulillah, I've never dabbled into any drugs, alcohol, anything. So like, nothing's, that's what I'm saying. I never was like off the path completely. And I got like, I just was to myself, you know, but alhamdulillah, it's all to my, all because of Allah, obviously, but my friends and my family, my friends are the main reason. And I'm sure we'll get into it, but like, alhamdulillah, yeah. My, always trying to be better though. And, you know, implement new habits to practice more, but alhamdulillah. Mashallah, I think that's amazing because, and I think that's, um, if, if you take it hand to hand with where FaZe Clan has gone now, and I think I'm sure you'll enlighten us now about where it is, where, where it was, and from where it was to where it is now, and being around all that money, being around all these <laughs> individuals and people, some people may see it as a career risk. Some people may see it as, look, I need to fit in. You know, I've got a company, I've got this, I've got that. But, uh, you know, for you to, despite having and seeing that, still take this path, I think, bro, that is, it's very strong. And may Allah give you istiqama and inspire others, just like Habib inspired you. Uh, inshallah, you inspire many others also. But, but tell us the journey where FaZe uh, has reached now from where it was yeah alhamdulillah um so yeah definitely we started in our you know i started in my in my room at my parents house just playing video games and definitely a big turning point was when i moved well i started going to events um here and there we had a couple of events we met up in different states around america for like a gaming event that was my first kind of interaction with like you're saying people that were doing things that I don't do, whether it's smoking or drinking and partying or whatever. And alhamdulillah, like I was around some of that stuff. Like if we have an Airbnb and we'd all be staying together, but like, I obviously alhamdulillah, I don't know. I, honestly, like, obviously I've had this, this like a uh, fear of Allah in my heart since I was younger. You know, I, that's the number one thing. I know that I shouldn't be doing any of those things. Honestly, I've never was even inclined to any of that stuff. Alhamdulillah. Um, but yeah, like I said, my friends and my family, I think my mom really ingrained a lot of these things in our heads too, as a young kid. So like those first couple of years of me being around that stuff, um, again, I never got too tempted. I never was like close to doing anything. Alhamdulillah. But like, it was definitely an interesting experience. And I remember having like a conversation with myself when I did move to New York that like, all right, I'm going to be by myself with no Muslims around me. And I'm going to have to make sure that I stay up my prayers I'm going to have to like make sure that I just stay on top of myself and not lose sight of that. And alhamdulillah, like, again, Allah made it easy for me. It was never something I struggled with. Alhamdulillah, spoke a lot with my friends and my family at all. Like I always, I never lost like, uh, you know, my life, alhamdulillah, has always been based around Islam and masjid and my friends. So like, it was mm. pretty, it's been pretty easy for me to maintain that. But like, yeah, I've been in settings. And like you said, like some people feel the pressure of like, I have to do this because I'm with, 
these very successful people and they're drinking like there is no play, chance on earth no matter what elon musk or anyone tried mm. to give me a drink of course it's not and especially now but even back then i was never would never have felt that peer pressure alhamdulillah oh, i don't which is amazing from allah you know alhamdulillah but um definitely it's tough uh, in other ways like money there's a lot of opportunity mm. again alhamdulillah never got too tempted never fell into it but like I could see other people in, in these situations being tempted by opportunity and, you know, haram money is something you don't want to go near. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a lot of opportunity to be honest, but subhanAllah, every time you turn something like that down, Allah gives you better and it sounds cliche, but it really does happen. So Alhamdulillah, it just, it, it was just self-discipline. Stay away from that stuff. So where's, where's face clan now? In terms of, I mean, you guys have gone public. Well, what does that mean for face clan? What does that mean for you? Yeah. Yep. So now I'm um, now we're a company with over 100 employees. Alhamdulillah. Like you said, we're we announced that we are our intent to go public uh, through a spec, like a merger, basically. Um, it's not necessarily done. Hopefully, with everything, the deal gets done, and inshallah, it should. It, oh, okay. You know, um, in the next couple. I don't, I don't know if I could speak on the time i'm so scared to talk about this stuff now but like, yeah yeah, yeah of it, course. It, inshallah we will be a publicly traded company in the near future and um yeah we have a we went from 10 of us or six of us that lived in a house making youtube videos to like now we have an office with 100 employees we have all these investors um i used to just be like a full-time youtuber like i was telling you it took me a little long to get set up because i haven't really sat in this room and made youtube videos in a while now i'm on the phone all day on meetings like you know building the business and the brand with with a lot of amazing employees that come from all different companies and parts of the world and yeah now we again we have we have all these we have all these professional teams competing we have all these sponsors now alhamdulillah we have all these youtubers and we have just like we're always looking to expand like now even you know we're trying to get out in the middle east and get teams there go out to to um different parts of the world and start branching out inshallah but it's just now a full-blown company and i can't believe there's all these old people that quit their jobs and dedicate their life every day to this brand like alhamdulillah it's 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 just a way of uh, a way for people to put food on their table now alhamdulillah oh, in so many ways that's it's amazing it's ajeeb and to see how um how society has changed when uh, gaming was was seen as a taboo yeah. And uh, even now, I think the issue, bro, is with some parents, they, they still don't understand this world. And I think because we have yourself and you have a very unique insight into the gaming world, we're going to definitely capitalize and, and really pick your brains because I think <clears> it's <throat> very important to understand what, what this world entails, what it offers the children <clears throat> and what tact what style parents can uh, approach their kids with. So I guess um, maybe to kind of um, ask your experience. So if you, if you were to think back to when you were uh, young and you were attracted by this uh, kind of gaming craze, what would you say uh, pushed you into escaping into the gaming world? Um, yeah, so a lot has changed since then. SubhanAllah, like back when I was a kid doing it, I actually used to hide when I became be, began doing YouTube videos and I was gaming, whatever. I used to hide it because back then, especially it was like you said, a little taboo was uh, something that was not uh, like something people looked up to. So it's the same people that used to kind of joke about. Now, nah, again, I'm not going to say I was bullied or anything, but like family and friends used to kind of make fun of it. Now, yeah. subhanAllah, 10 years later are either trying to launch their own streams or, you know, wow. so like a lot changed. <laughs> um, and back then, I, I wouldn't say I necessarily like escaped into the world. It's actually really crazy. I wasn't a big fan of like um, the video games that I even play, like that I, uh, that phase got successful on playing. Like even months before my cousins would be playing and I would be like, oh, I don't want to play this. Like I was really obsessed with baseball out of all all the sports in the world i know you probably especially in europe you guys probably roll your eyes at even hearing the word baseball but i was very obsessed with it but i think like i realized i had a pretty obsessive personality or addictive personality so like i was all into baseball like 100 percent. and then it kind of 180 spun a lot of nowhere and i started watching gaming videos on youtube and i really don't know how it happened like well i can't even remember 
a turning point. I just somehow was just in this world. And within like a year, I ended up joining Face Clan. It was a small brand at the time. Um, but like I grew up playing video games or whatever, but like I really was not, you know, it was not like a, it wasn't something that I like decided at any point, like I'm going to do this. I'm going to just subhanAllah just kind of happened over time. But um, I, I don't know. I just fell into it. Like I said, it was a lot different uh, back then. Now when we speak on gaming and, and um, careers and all that stuff, it, it was non-existent back then. So it's so hard to speak from that lens versus now it's a hard thing to give my experience and, and have people try to implement it now because the world's so different. But um, yeah, you're yeah. right. I mean, how gaming was then uh, chatting and uh, now so many things have been incorporated within gaming that people yeah. actually find it easier to socialize with each other uh, via, via gaming, via a medium, just like people find it easier to socialize um, through alcohol. That's why pubbing and clubbing they use alcohol once they're drunk then they start you know being able to socialize so i guess uh, that some what is being kind of adopted by some gamers where just sitting in a room talking is just not enough it's just too boring yeah. and yeah. having the medium of, of a game playing and then when you're in a game then it kind of loosens you up and then you start you know being able to uh, communicate yeah. with each yeah. other which, uh, yeah, could is, is a positive for, I guess, those people that uh, find it difficult to make friends. But I guess it's negative because it makes the, the, the real life more mundane. Yeah. So I guess um, what, what do you think that the gaming world offers that the real world struggles with? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, Oh, wait, well, I'm really sorry. Can I just blow my nose really fast? Go for, it, edit? go for it. I'm really sorry. No, we're going to keep like... this for the trailer. At the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> so like you mentioned, um, there's a lot of pros and cons in the quote unquote gaming world. But in my experience, like what I got out of the gaming in the gaming world versus what I like in in the real world, I guess you could phrase was opportunity and like unique friendships and experiences that I wouldn't have ever had. So I had a lot of friends who were like polar opposites of where I grew up, who I hang out with, how my family was that I met online. Like my closest friends back when I was like 14, 15, my closest friend was like five years older than me. People know him, FaZe Banks. If they go look him up, you will, see, if you watch him for one day, you'll see that me and him are polar opposites. And we both say this, I'm not talking bad about him at all. He knows we're complete opposites, but at the time we were best friends. We played xbox together for like eight hours a day we were on the mic with each other all day long um you know he was five years older than me partying and drinking in high school when i was at home <laughs> doing nothing playing call of duty and then going to the masjid you know for example so like we were complete opposites but i learned so much from that experience um just from sitting in my room at home and talking to meeting people online so i feel like i grew up a lot faster than i would have if i was not in this universe because I just had so much experience with friends from, like I said, you, whether it's Boston or Canada or Sweden or Portugal or France, whatever, all these people all around the world and all around America talk. So I learned about different cultures, uh, different ages and whatever. So like, I would have never hung out with this guy if we weren't online. Like I would have never, he would have never looked at me. If I like, kid five years younger than him, I would have never, we would have never talked, but we spent hours talking to each other. And, you know, so like, for me, I think it helped me break out of like a shell that I could have potentially grew up being a little more introverted and stuff. I kind of was at the time, not necessarily like super, super quiet, but like, I think it definitely made me more extroverted, uh, more of an extrovert <laughs> and more like confident in myself growing up and talking to people and stuff. So for me, I, I think I, I, my social skills definitely uh, improved in, uh, you know, grew while i was online talking to people and uh again don't get me wrong though it's not the story for everyone yeah uh there's a lot of toxicity in gaming there's a lot of bad experiences even me i gained a lot of bad habits like i never cursed in my life before i started gaming and then the same people that i'm talking about right now would be cursing a lot a lot and then i started using those words and like it Unfortunately, like there's pros and cons, like I said, so I'm not saying everyone go online, meet friends like I don't I'm not giving any advice. I'm just saying my story. It yeah. helped, but it's definitely 
you know, the next five years after that, I had to like start trying to fix some bad habits that I also learned from that. But um, yeah, it's, it, I think other than, other than that, it's also opportunity. And I think like I grew up with like unbelievable opportunity, alhamdulillah, being a, a YouTuber um, that as a 14 year old, I was, you know, I never, un- I never had a job, subhanAllah, like outside of YouTube. So when I was 14, right away, I started making YouTube videos. I started just playing video games. So like for me, I had the opportunity to earn a living while I was in high school, kind of, and start start doing that. And I, I got a whole career path, you know, out of it. And I think a lot, not just me, but a lot of thousands of kids had the same experience where they were able to double down on something that they that, that they love doing and turn it into like a career and an income. So not just that, but I learned a lot about, you know, personally again but again a lot of people learned a lot about finances and taxes and investing and i ended up strengthening my um self-discipline because i was trying to stay on top of making a video every day and all those things so like i'm sure you know how it is you can't take your eye off youtube for five minutes or your whole channel goes down into the dirt so it's you know you learn a lot in that sense so like alhamdulillah it's not just gaming but the, being a youtuber i guess it, it, it just made me really grow up i think a lot quicker I'd I'd probably say for for DAO videos it's 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 somewhat different because it's not we don't see it like a like a business sort of thing, like I work uh, outside of of YouTube. Oh yeah, 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 and because yeah, obviously true, yeah. With, yeah because of DAO, you can't really rely on it uh, for for money because then it starts messing with your intentions. And, no, no, def a hundred percent, yeah. So if you no, up, but even yeah. even. Even beyond, I mean, I'm, I don't know if you guys feel this at all. Obviously, way different content. Like for me, even when I, I made an Arabic channel and everything that I'm talking about right now and I'm about to say did not apply to it. You're right, because I just had a different reason I was doing it, you know. Mm-hmm. But even beyond the income and stuff, just seeing your numbers go down as I was just sucked into that. Me and the whole house that I lived with just so sucked into like that. You just want to see yeah. improvement, improvement on your number. Even so- again, beyond money. It, a lot of times it was even like we didn't even care about the money. We just wanted to see the viewership. And even yeah. that, it wasn't for like fame or anything. It was just like a personal like, like, I don't know. You just you had this. It was like a game in our heads to to maintain a certain amount of views on our channels and whatever. But I'm I think that all of it was life lessons, you know, I think I think that's um, I, I think even when we're together, like hijab, Ali and myself, even when we're here, even without when our views are low, um sometimes you hear the brother saying look uh, you know our job is to post the content and post it the best way we can yeah um obviously the rest is 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 in the hands of allah because yeah. with dawah if you get stuck with numbers then it starts again you start making content because with the gaming thing it actually makes sense yeah when you get certain numbers it makes sense to replicate those videos yeah, but in the yeah. dawah, like certain things I may want to talk about, but I know my video is not going to get monetized. Yeah. I know it's probably yeah. shadow banned <laughs> yeah. as, as it happens on numerous occasions where people think, you know, he's probably doing this. And he's yeah, in, yeah, like, no, it makes sense. But yeah. like one of the recent videos that I did is just stuck now because YouTube age limited it. Why? Because it's deemed it to be a, a certain thing. Yeah. But yeah, I think no. um, you're hundred percent right with the, with the gaming thing. Sometimes it can become uh, toxic. I know certain people, yeah, addicted to views and you yeah. know progress and and stuff like that. It can it can be a bit too much. But what would your advice be to uh, to maybe gamers that are too obsessed? Uh, yeah. Whether it's uh, because you know, I guess I, I guess to the way you're doing it. Some gamers they play just for the sake of playing. Like they're not even bringing income home, and their parents are really frustrated with them. At yeah, least with yeah. yourself, you turned it into like a growth. What advice would would you give to to those people that it's actually become like a, like a burden or like a weight, and it's affecting their relationship with their parents, affecting their social life? It's just become an obsession. Yeah. Um, no, alhamdulillah. Again, for me, like the balance is the most important thing. I mean, I, like I said, mixing in going out with my friends and going to the masjid and obviously again, you know, maintaining just that connection with Allah. If you're a Muslim, young Muslim, of course I'm speaking about, it's the number one important thing obviously is to just make sure it doesn't completely take over your life. 
I was never, you know, too like addicted at that level, but it's, I don't know. Like I, I feel today I am with my phone and like getting sucked into my phone. So it's like a lot of times, like, I don't want to be hypocritical. I wake up, I'm dude, I wasted so much time today. (laughs) Like I could have done so much more. And it's, it's a tough, it's a tough thing, honestly. Uh, But again, it goes back to self-discipline. You got to like build the habits. You got to force it. So it becomes something that you can, you can control. So for me, it's just people are like in a bad relationship with their families. And I know a lot of times too, a lot of people feel like, okay, but my, it's not me. My family doesn't get it. My mom doesn't understand. And she, you know, like maybe there's a little bit of that. And maybe there's a little bit on you as well that you're doing a little bit too much. So I guess my recommendation would be to like, try to get to a place where you're not, you know, upsetting your parents and you're listening to them. Cause here, this is the thing we're all young and we think we know everything, but the older I get to, I'm just like, okay, you know, you, the older you get, and I'm sure you can, you can vouch for this as well. You realize like so many things, Oh my, I'm so dumb that I thought I was right when my mom said this. And mm. so again, don't get me wrong. I was at a khutbah yesterday and the imam was going off about, uh, how bad video games are and people romanticize <laughs> killing and stuff. And I'm sitting there like this guy. I mean, I like know my him, views but, are going down. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, I don't know. Even when it comes to that, even, like as I got older too, that's something I don't know where the halal and the haram is with all these things, you know? So like, and it's hard sometimes to get advice because some shiuch, they don't really, they're just kind of older and they just throw things out. Like it's just haram without, so I, it's I, for me, it's just like balance. Number one, um, I think I do, too, when I'm when I play video games. Now, when I play at like night or something, I'll have something like how did I have multiple monitors set up here? So like I have my game on one monitor, then I have YouTube over here. And I always try to put something uh, like uh, Islamic or like something I could benefit from. And uh, maybe that doesn't answer your original question, but that's just advice I have is like, I think that's what made me so grounded with Islam is I always was consuming content at the same time. Like whenever I had, cause whenever I had downtime, I kind of have a YouTube video on. So if I'm playing a game that I'm just kind of playing, going through the motions, I don't need to like focus and talk to people. I'll throw in a video. And you know, these last couple of years, that's where I came across your channel and all the Dawa videos. Now that's what I watch. Whenever I have a chance, Dawa videos. It just, I love seeing the conversations between Christians and that's the stuff I'm into now, but back when I first started, I'd watch khutbahs and just learn and, you know, the sira and all that kind of stuff. So mm. I would just recommend a mix, you know, and again, never sit, play in a video game, look at your clock. You see that you're about to miss the hood and you just close your phone and keep playing like stuff like that is the worst thing you could do. And all that's going to give you, it's just going to drag you in a hole. You know what I'm saying? So as long as you're able to balance your life, um, and make sure your family's happy with you because you have to be, obviously, even if your parents are wrong, you cannot be sitting there fighting with your parents over a video game. It's not worth it. will never be worth it. And yeah, it's just it's just finding that balance and getting advice, I guess, if you're having trouble. And um, yeah, I don't know, not going too overboard. MashaAllah, very good advice, bro. I, I, it was a good detail answer. You mentioned friends, going out with friends. So in other words, you started off by saying appointments. Yeah, have appointments with your friends and that's yeah. very practical because other things a person can argue yeah it sounds good in theory but having an appointment uh to the masjid knowing Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha, Fajr it's at a certain time and you set your alarm and then with friends obviously they badger you as well you go and it's good for your eyes you know looking at a screen and then looking at a distance yeah. going out and about getting fresh air interacting with people that was very good and also what you also said bro which was very good is um you prioritize and you understand the status of gaming the fact that you're playing a game you're not invested fully and completely in it you're, yeah. you've also got something that you deem to be more important so you have this azmat you have this respect for the deen also which which i think uh, because you you were in doubt as to whether you answered it i think you answered it really well mashallah in a very kind of comprehensive comprehensive way and, thank you um, I, I tend sometimes to go a little too long in the answers talk a little so <laughs> if i do feel free to you know cut off my long answers but thank you i appreciate it no, it's, it's good it's bro good. To, to be honest it's it's a good frank conversation and uh, to be honest i was very excited about this because it's all well and good like you said and with all due respect to the imams and the scholars uh, i think this will be an important case study for them to to see 
somebody that's made it that big into the scene you i think your answers will be very important very enlightening um so that's why so, yeah i mean just just uh, uh don't feel that you have to uh, cut or curtail what you're saying no thank you thank you uh, all right so um that was good okay so i think you you kind of uh, have already uh, answered this because you said you are already practicing so were you always practicing or uh, was there like a transition um period that you went through you know i think about this sometimes sorry i'm switching my battery as i answer this but i'm think i think about this sometimes and like i try to think back i try to think about like i've thought about that question to myself because i'm like was there a point where i used to not pray not care about it but alhamdulillah like i cannot remember a time where i used to again look at the clock you know i'm about to miss a salah and make that conscious decision that i'm not going to pray like alhamdulillah it just has always been a part of like there's just i've always had that guilt i've always had that fear i'm not missing i'm not going to miss the whole, like if i notice you know there's no way i'm going to miss it inshallah like mm. so for me i've always had at least salah as a foundation um again i'll be honest quran like reading quran i never like maybe i Last couple of years, I started like I realized, OK, whoa, like I don't pick up the Quran. You know, when I was younger, it was something I didn't ever do. Uh, my Arabic is, alhamdulillah, it's gotten a lot better the last couple of years. But I used to not know really how to speak because my parents didn't speak it at home. But like I learned how to read and write as a kid. So like I had all this foundation, but I didn't really act on it or learn or, or add to it. So the older I got, I started doing that. Um, but I always was praying, alhamdulillah. I was always, uh, my mom always had us in the masjid on Friday nights for the youth group and stuff like that. But So you said you didn't pick up the Quran that much. When you did start picking up the Quran, how, what did you, how did you feel it, it kind of changed or added to your life? Yeah, alhamdulillah. Um, you know, I was always listening to it and I was, I had like some sort of connection with it, but mm. I would read it very, like I used to me, my friends again, like, I didn't really get into my friend group yet. I'm sure one of these questions I'll have an, an opportunity to, but wallahi, alhamdulillah, they're like the reason I am even 1% of a good Muslim, obviously after Allah is because my family and my friends, my friends, your, your friends, though you spend so much time with them. So they have the yes. biggest impact on you. So wow. a lot of my friends, um, you know, grew up in same, you know, very practicing families as well and all this and that. And a lot of them actually grew up in the Arab world and then moved to America. So their Arab is a lot better. And these are non-gamers, yeah? Yeah, yeah, they're not. None of them are actually. Oh. I mean, they play. Yeah, we play together, but like none of them at all are like into they're like, like not I am. not at the gaming to Jenna. Uh, no, 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 no. You level. would, you would, you would smash them in every game. No, okay. <laughs> but uh, no, they are. You know, we we so we bond over gaming as well. But uh, yeah, honestly, it's that. It's it's um, I it's my friends. But when I used to read with them. Too like I'd be so embarrassed to open like to ch we'd read in the circle sometimes. Alhamdulillah, like would, whatever on a Friday would be bored. Okay, let's just go read. Not all the time. I'm gonna act like we we're angels, but here and there we do that. And uh, I used to be embarrassed to read because my Arabic was so bad. But like they're the kind of friends that are like, no, 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 keep going. You know, you get double the good deeds when you're making a mistake. You know that hadith. Mm. I'm just like, okay, so like more and more I practice with them. My dad, I we started reading more and. Alhamdulillah, like it just honestly, it was just reading over and over. And Alhamdulillah, every Ramadan, I made a good habit of reading, which is a good thing that a lot of people do. But it's also like, again, throughout, it's only Ramadan for a lot of people. So even me, like, I don't, again, I don't want to be hypocritical. I don't read as much as I should now still. Like, Alhamdulillah, I, again, Alhamdulillah, for me, music, I could cut that out and put Quran in the car, like, that's no problem. That's a good habit I have. But when it comes to actually opening the Quran and reading, it's something I don't do. But yeah, well, like, it's every time I read and I learn more about the Quran, it's just like an unbelievable, never ending. You're, it never ends that you learn something new whenever you open it. So yeah, it's that is, of course, just like softened my heart. You know, when it comes to Islam, the more I read and learn about the Quran, it just opens my eyes a little more to like how, alhamdulillah, amazing our religion is and how amazing the Quran is, but it's definitely what, uh, yeah. what might help, bro. Is there's certain apps like you got the Quran Lee app, and I'm sure yeah. there's, there's other apps as well, yeah, that send you regular reminders and these little oh, you've you read this many ayahs or this or yeah. that. And right, I don't know, yeah, may, yeah may, maybe try those. And obviously, I speak to myself before I speak to you. Um, it, it, it might it might kind of help, 
or um, yeah, yeah. When you get these little, you know, and they're colorful and they they pop up and they pop in notifications. Yeah. yeah no, well, nice. thank you. You're right. It, it, yeah. It's so simple, but like, like it, I mean, that's what's helped me pr- pray. Honestly, that's I'm gonna take your advice and give it as well when it comes to salah. Like, the only not the only reason, but a lot of the times. The only way I remember is like I get a notification 30 minutes to the hood and it's really bad to wait till the end of the salah. But like that helps a lot. You know what I'm saying? When you get that notification, it's Asr time or 30 minutes to Maghrib. You're right. So when I, I should definitely implement that when it comes to reading Quran, inshallah. I think you made a really good point about friends, bro, because there's <laughs> a, a, a big emphasis in Islam for having good friends. They say, you know, um, uh, I think they say... Uh, a bad friend is worse than a snake because with a snake, if he bites you, your life goes. But if a bad friend, you know, has his uh, effect on you, then your iman can go as well. So yeah, uh, that's definitely one of, uh, I would say, I had two really good friends, uh, Faizan and uh, Osama. They, mashallah, when I would go to the masjid, they would wear simple clothes and I would not be wearing brands and simple clothes. And sometimes, you know, when your friends are constantly saying, oh, what are you wearing? Or what's that? Or I got this, I got that. And that becomes like a big thing. And the next time it is playing on your head. But because they didn't care about brands, then I started uh, dressing simply as well. And I was more comfortable and, you know, uh, shout out to them. And it seems like, mashallah, your friends also kept you on the straight and narrow. And this is definitely one of the advice that I give people is good company is so, so important. it's unbelievable how important it is. Well, like I, it's the most important thing ever for me and for all my friends. We all have a similar experience. We all look at each other, alhamdulillah, like, alhamdulillah for our group of friends because we could have went so many different ways. Again, for myself, my experience of living with so many non-Muslims and being around that and having all, all this potential temptation and opportunity in front of me. Like I'm telling you, the only thing was my friend's that connection I had, our, our WhatsApp group that I was in every day. And every time I'd go back to California to see that it, it's, you're right. The same thing. None of us cared about anything, but the simple things And our relationship was built around the masjid. It's the best. That's the best friend you can have is someone you meet at the masjid. Like, so another advice youth group. I don't know if you guys have youth group or if it's called something else, but like Friday nights that you have a youth thing at the masjid here for us. And like my mom used to force me to go mm. and I'd go with my brothers. And I was like, uh, but like it was the best thing ever because I met all my friends one by one at the masjid and then wow. they're family friend. And then like every Friday for like five years, we'd go to Jum'a, we'd hang out the entire day, we'd eat together. Then we'd go to the youth group at night. So like our whole, you know, friendship was just based around that. And it, it there's nothing on earth worth, you know, like getting sucked into the, to the bad, nasty things in this world. And friends are more supportive. And it's not to, again... I don't like to sound like, oh, look at this eye and the Quran or whatever that I but like. I would just saw a video. It's crazy recently. I don't know. I can't uh, quote the exact ayah, but it, in English, it was basically like on the day of judgment, someone's screaming like, oh, I wish I didn't take that man as a friend, basically. Mm. And I could f- try to find it and link it to you, inshallah, if you want to put it. But like when I heard that recitation, too, it was another moment. Where I was like, dude, alhamdulillah for my friends. Like this is so, so true. One bad friend that you follow can take you the complete wrong direction in life. And unfortunately, a lot of people choose friends too over there, even like their parent. Like I have friends that their dad, his dad, one of my really close friends, his dad used to yell at him every day. Stop being friends with that guy. Either you live in my house. Like he literally told him, you can either live here or you can be friends with him. You decide. And like, he was like a 15 year old. He went out and his dad told him to get out and come back and tell me in like two hours. Like he tells me the story and like subhanAllah years later, like not to talk bad about the guy, but you just see him on the complete wrong path. And my friend is like, wow, I don't know how my dad knew, but he knew when he was right. And it's like, wow. again, we think we're smart when we're young. What is my dad talking about? He's, but no, it's, you have to be super, super, super like conscious of who you're hanging out with. I think that's, uh, that, that's, uh, that should be a very good uh, kind of reminder to the imams and uh, the people in the committee that are watching that uh, simple, Friday youth's gathering can have such an impact on somebody and such an influence that we sometimes, you know, the people that organize this stuff, they, uh, I guess it's planting a seed and yeah. because they don't see it grow and they just see these people that are ungrateful or whatnot. And they're like, Oh, what a waste. 
But I yeah. mean, here we have a a fruit that has uh, grown, mashallah. Oh no, uh, known known <laughs> as the, the the apex fruit. <laughs> no, 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 mashallah. So, yeah. It's like you were just saying about like mashallah. May Allah bless you and everyone that does what you guys do. Because like you see that you're genuine. Like you were saying about. You're in te- being worried about your intentions and stuff, you know, when you're making videos and stuff. I mean, all that stuff is so real, too. And that's the thing, too. Like, unfortunately, a lot of people, they go to the masajid and they have really bad encounters with shiuch or with people that are leading the youth group or people giving the khutbahs. Or, and then it turns people off to Islam. Like, that's something I've noticed very strong, like a very reoccurring issue in America. Mm. I don't know if you guys have the same issue, but like so many people have a bad experience with the uh, Qari in the masjid or an imam or something and they just group Islam with that experience and they don't want anything to do with it so it's like it's so unfortunate but obviously it's all Allah it's all in Allah's hands and Allah's plan but like I can go to the masjid and have the experience that I just explained to you but someone else yeah. my age can have the complete opposite so it's unfortunate you know that I think I think there's people with bad intentions, but a lot of the times too, I just think it's a little bit of ignorance from like the older generations and stuff, and they don't know how to speak to the right people. So you're right, the youth it's super important, and again, not to be hypocritical. So like knowing that I should help with the youth, we should all help in our message and like our communities. Inshallah, like, I'm I'm sure yeah. you will, bro. Um, I'm I'm Inshallah. sure you definitely will. But I think one good point is, even if you do go to these masjids and uh, you do. Uh, come across these experiences realize you'd come across these experiences anywhere and everywhere yeah you you find certain teachers in certain schools that doesn't mean you stop going to school you'll find certain doctors a certain way but you take the good and you leave the bad Uh, if you have this approach then you'll be able to extract the good from so many different kind of places but when you look at the bad and then you label the whole thing as bad. You're restricting and curtailing yourself. So I'm, uh, in fact, you're a very good example that, mashallah, you went. And I'm sure you did come across some negative experiences. But the fact that uh, you made friends and you powered through it. Uh, yeah. Mashallah. No, no, thank you. Yeah, alhamdulillah. You just got to always remember that these people don't represent Islam. But honestly, yes. too, it's like put it, you have to also put in the extra effort to learn. Because if I didn't watch these YouTube videos and learn on my own. I would have only learned what I learned in the khutbah on Friday. And Mm -hmm. I learned from these bad people and I would have thought that that's Islam. So like, I I think just the last thing I'll say on this is I think a lot of people have like a horrible mentality where like, they're just like, Oh, they just like blame it on the people in the Islam, whatever. And they make the decision to like, I don't, whatever, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's, this is how the message did. This is how these religious people are. And then they go away, but it's like, all right, mm. either you could do that and that's on you and may Allah guide all of us. But like, that's going to be on you on the day of judgment. That excuse is not going to work because all you got to do is go out of your own, spend an extra hour a day, learn a little bo- min- a little bit more about Islam on your own and try to defeat that um, image in your head because that's not the true image. Uh, the reality is, that is not true. Whatever that excuse is, is not true. You're right. There's people that are bad and all that, but like it's on us to go learn from the good sources then. So like you got to, you can't just give up. You know what I'm saying? You have to act, you have to care and you have to try. So yeah. Like if you, if you're, if you're genuinely ill and you go to a doctor and he just doesn't do the job, that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean you didn't go home exactly. and revel uh, in your illness yeah, and just exactly. wither away and erode yep. and evaporate. Uh, <laughs> you, right. Yeah, you look for another doctor. You you ask professionals. Yeah. Like, like you said, you then go online, you search for answers. And you made a very good point that why is it that this same fervor, this the same drive isn't there for Islam? It does need to come from us also as well. Yeah. So, bro, like, uh, what would you say in your experience uh, when when you speak to uh, people in the gaming industry? What would you say, uh, or rather, why would Islam benefit young gamers? Um, so, my experience, and alhamdulillah, obviously, I've had experience with a lot of like successful YouTubers and gamers and stuff, right? So, I actually think it's a very interesting perspective. Because you always see growing up too, like child stars and actors from movies, they went crazy and people are always like, why did that happen? They're so successful and whatever. In my experience, 
like I'm, it's like the biggest blessing and curse, you know, success at a young age, especially mm. um, because you get it, you, you achieve your goals, you're in a good place and you do everything you want to do. But once you've achieved your goal and you don't have a new goal, there's this massive void and people do not know what to do and where to go. So Alhamdulillah, like I've had, like I was telling you earlier, I was obsessed with views and YouTube and I wanted to hit this amount and I make this and all of that. And like, once I reached all those goals and I started getting really worn out for making YouTube videos, like for me, I just kind of stopped. I made like a video every day for like five years. It was easy for me to wind down and focus on other things or whatever. But a lot of people, they feel like they achieved everything. They're like, what's next? You know, like Alhamdulillah, I always had Allah and foundation around Islam. But like for me, the biggest void I've noticed is that. Like genuinely, and it's, it sounds cliche, but like anybody I've seen that has been successful or has been whatever or has whatever, like that's always missing. When they when they're not distracted, whether by a party or fun or whatever, or, or their goals, maybe they're super into like finishing a certain project. When all that's done and you don't have that drive and you're kind of just sitting around, the biggest word in the world is not a, having anything to the next life to focus on Allah and Islam and yourself to make it better, you know? So like, I, I just think people need it, especially in this world with Instagram and social media and expectation and everything you see when it comes to materialism and everything that is just disgusting about the society that we live in. Nothing can ground you like Islam. You know, I'm sure other religions for some people do the same thing, but like, yeah, it's, it's, I just think it's, completely necessary to just stay grounded and, and and to have a goal in life is to to please Allah and to be the good Muslim. like after everything whether it's trials and tribulations or it's or it's, it's the most success in the world there's going to be a point where you look at yourself and you're just like all right like what now or where do i go now and a lot of people can't find that answer and they go and i've seen it firsthand more than people even know publicly people have seen things but like you just see it. People go drugs and this and that, or they try to find some new outlet to get that from. You're never going to get it from anything, but literally, but like that faith. Well, it's, it's crazy. Alhamdulillah. So I think everyone need like it. Everyone needs that in life. What would you do differently if you were a, a young gamer again? So if you could go back and you could just advise yourself, look, uh, here are the things that you need to do. That's going to be very helpful. Yeah. What would you say? I would try to teach myself not to stress so much again over numbers and just just short term goals. You know, um, it's very easy to get sucked into like the day to day and stress yourself over like things that don't matter. So like, I think what I learned the most was like mental health is number one important thing. And you can get very burnt out by overwhelming yourself and setting like unrealistic expectations and like feeling bad if you're not hitting a certain level every day. Like, like I said, one day off, for example, of like making YouTube, I know I'm just more about YouTube versus a gamer, but like one day off of like, this is not gonna, the world's not gonna end if you're not, you know, like, I, I don't know when, I, when, when mm. I was, I think I would just be like more aware and take more care of myself because in the long term I got burnt out. That's why I don't really make vid videos anymore. It's like, I can't, like I, it was, it's just so t taxing on me as a person and I know that sounds crazy for people like, oh, what are you talking about? I go to work every day, whatever. Like, alhamdulillah, I'm not trying to speak out of any like, you know, I, I understand everyone's experience is different. I'm saying for me, for anyone in our position, it happens a lot. You see it a lot with YouTubers. If anyone follows YouTubers other than that was seen again, like uh, it's very taxing. People have like you fall off. It's really hard. Like if you want a long term success. Bro, you know you what? I'm going to chip in there because uh you, you know what you're 100 right someone going to work and if they arrive late one person's going to tell them they're late or if your yeah. tie is not on properly maybe like two people are going to tell him but when you're a youtuber and you've uploaded something and you've made mistakes you've got literally hundreds of people like on your yeah. case <laughs> yeah, so yeah. i totally vibe with what you're saying yeah. bro, and you're 100 right and yeah you're right to I don't think people can say, oh, no, but I go to office. It's just not the same because yeah, yeah. But going to office, like one day, if you have a bad day, like that's it. But when you're on YouTube, like that video is up and it's being yeah. viewed by millions. Imagine getting on stage and millions are yeah. watching what you're doing. So yeah, 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 it's a lot. No, it's a lot mentally yeah. like on, on like it's it's not an easy thing to deal with. Yeah, especially as like a young kid. And 
everyone has their pressure in every way, you know, it's so like even someone watching maybe feels the pressure from his parents that might amount to the same pressure we feel on YouTube, but it's just like, you gotta take, you gotta like calm yourself down and, and not get too sucked in, not overwhelm yourself because you're just going to crack it at some point you're going to, it's going to explode. So like, for me, I would just be a lot more like focus more on the long-term vision and like calm myself down or whatever. And, and just how, stay focused. How would, you, how would you tell 40, your 14 year old self to calm, calm himself down? Uh, it's a good question. Honestly, I don't, I'm not even sure how I would implement it, but like, I just used to sit in my room stressing so much if I didn't upload uh, two videos a day at some point and live stream for three hours. And it's just, again, unrealistic. Like, would you I think say, I would, and correct me if I'm wrong, would you say uh, maybe adopting more hobbies would help? Maybe if you've got like a, a, a soccer match or baseball <laughs> match. Soccer. And you know, you're, you're kind of, you're I, I think, yeah. In activities. Yeah, you yeah, yeah you're right. Help? 100%. I think, like you said earlier, setting like, certain times or appointments where you're doing specific things to keep yourself on like a schedule. Also a schedule is a very good thing to implement. Even for me now, I try to implement it and I can't get into the groove, but like if you're able to like, let's just say in a perfect world, you want to be the best Muslim you could be and you're able to wake up and pray Fajr and stay awake and read some Quran and then chill for a couple hours, eat breakfast. And then you start a little bit of work and then you take a break and then you if you're able to like make a schedule that you could follow a balanced schedule, I think that's, that's a very good, you know, again, it takes a lot of self-discipline. Self-discipline is the yeah. number one important thing in life. You got to get your brain right on like, on just being able to show up. And I'm some people that are going to watch this that I know are probably going to be like, Oh, what's this guy talking about. He's always late to this or that. I fell out of it a little bit. All right. But like when I was at my peak of like, working and stuff i had the most self-discipline i would never you know like miss anything and i think it's really important and, and I, something even like the gym by the way i think is so beneficial you mm. feel better mentally it helps you just need hobbies you're right activities hobbies you need to see friends you need to balance all those things and obviously as a muslim you should implement as much you know slam into your day as well and throughout the week at least not even maybe every day start slow just start slow too with everything one thing at a time, build up. Don't try to do everything overnight, you know? I think um, some of your answers, mashallah, tie up well together because if uh, a person's adopted Islam from an early age, surely that will instill the, the power within for self-discipline because I do realize self-discipline is very hard to do. And that's why uh, you said yourself also, your mom had to force you to go to these Friday gatherings. Yeah. And I think there is some onus on parents to realize that, you know, technology does have a drug dopamine uh, like effect on children. And sometimes they find it very difficult. So some sort of parent intervention is important, but of course parents do need to give, you know, good alternatives. So like we're yeah. talking about hobbies, if they have put stuff in place, um, it will definitely help the situation. Then of course, on top of that, if kids also are, you know, adopting that um, self-discipline thing and listening to yourself and seeing what, what self-discipline can actually help you accomplish. Um, yeah. Because let's face it, bro. I mean, if, if you want mm -hmm disciplined or if you did go overboard you wouldn't be in a position that you're in yeah no of course and and also i think you made a good point about parents too i think i've i'm so used to the audience being people my age and younger but like you're right maybe there's some parents watching and there probably is inshallah and to me the best advice to parents is to like you don't like not this isn't from my personal experience but people that i know right a lot of parents are like really hard on their kids sometimes like all you do is waste your time all day playing video games, like blah, 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 blah. Like, like hmm. I think there's multiple things that I like that, that bothers me. Like multiple reasons why that bothers me. One, I guess a lot of kids, you never know what they're going through. You know, not every kid's going to share with their parents, how they're feeling about certain things or what's going on in their life and stuff. So like, like you said earlier, for some people, it is an escape. And yeah, that doesn't mean that they should have full freedom to just sit 24 seven, but like every time you go and you're like, why are you doing this? You're wasting your life, whatever. That's just going to push them deeper. Like, I don't care. I'm just going to say you're playing, right? Like that's a lot of people's way. That's like a therapy for a lot of people is, is, is video games. Right. And I feel like, again, like there's so much, it's just all about delivery. If you see a problem with your kid playing too much, whatever, there's ways to implement things without doing it in a way that's going to push them 
more away from what you're like. Some people like, you know, again, scream at their kids, whatever you have to go to the masjid. That's not going to make a kid want to go to the masjid. Mm. <laughs> That's not going to make a kid want it, to. It, it's just going to push people in the opposite direction. So I just think it's super important to try to like understand, try to like dissect why maybe he's playing 12 hours a day. Why try to talk to the kid, see what mm. he enjoys about it. See what, maybe if there's an issue, maybe he's like, Oh, I don't like to go to school. I don't like to go out because People are mean to me, for example, or like I get bullied or whatever. Okay. Then it's like, you feel, then it changes your perspective. Then you look at your kid and you feel bad for the kid because this is the only place that he finds peace. It's like, there's, there's just ways. If there's an issue, there's an issue and there's ways to, to, to solve it though. You know, I just, a lot of people just, uh, it's just like when people have drug issues, like it's sad, right? It's a bad, it's, they made a decision sometimes to get into this bad habit, but they cannot help it a lot. Like if someone has a real yeah. bad drug issue, it's easy to be like, oh, this guy's a drug addict and stuck for the law. This guy, why is he doing all these bad things? But like, they don't realize, like you just said, they me- physically and mentally cannot help themselves. Some people like, so it's, you shouldn't just write something off as the person's a bad person or you're dumb or you're wasting your time. Like it's a lot deeper than that for some people. So it's just like, you know, let's, Try to understand that some people are genuinely having issues stopping, whether it's drugs or even a gaming. You know, I've never seen someone that addicted to gaming, but I do know people that that's all they do. They don't, they're not in school. They don't work. And like, it's again, it all is a result though, to me of like, yeah, maybe it's on the kid, but a lot of it could be too. Like the family, every time you go down to a family dinner, you get a comment like, oh, are you still just playing video games all day? Like, why would you want to go down to the next family dinner and sit with your family if that's all you hear? You know mm. what I'm saying? So like that happens a lot. And I just think like, it's just a whole, it's just a cycle that like parents don't realize they're like family members, or older people don't realize that they're making it worse every time they try to fix it. So it's, yeah, it's, I don't know. It's, it's, it's an point. interesting topic. You, you've, yeah. you've highlighted a very important issue, which is communication, communication yeah. and trying to, rather than tugging at the leaves, looking at the yeah. root of the issue. Yeah, where yeah. where is this stemming from? Communicating and then looking at where it's stemming from, and then and then and and then tackling that bit rather than uh, yeah. plucking the leaves and then worrying why the tree's still growing. I mean, exactly. Cut, yeah, cut the thing off from the root. Yeah, and then chuck it in the bin. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're right. Well, uh, that's a great way to phrase it. Uh, it's yeah. So, bro, it, I think, yeah. mashallah. <laughs> sorry, you were gonna say? No, 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 nothing. nothing. I'm saying. It was a good point, alhamdulillah. Yeah, so I think, mashallah, you, what we did was I think we combined some, uh, quite a few questions uh, in, in one, mashallah, and I think we covered a, a, a wide array of, of topics and, and challenges. Uh, do you think we've missed anything? No, not that I can think of. Alhamdulillah, I feel like we touched up on everything. Um I don't know. No, I, I, I think I, I think I guess one thing I will say just to emphasize too, as you get older, you made the point, but you're right. Like no matter where, like I think just the number one thing to me for like a young business, uh, young guy that's going into business or getting a new job out of college or whatever is you're right. That peer pressure, that feeling of like going into new rooms and the, you know, just being, a, it's just super important to always, have that remembrance, you know, wherever you are and whatever you're doing and that, like realize that nothing outweighs Allah and the day of judgment. And when you're going to face everything you're doing, you know what I'm saying? And I just think that's like the number one thing as I got older, even when I talked to some of my friends who like have opportunities and stuff, it's just like, it's easy to say again, and it sounds cliche, but like, it's so easy to slip away. So you got to be on top of yourself. Always. You just got to always, uh, I think that's just the number one thing I even got out of this conversation. It's just, you're right. You always got to set up things to remind yourself. You always got to be like super aware and conscious of like what the situation you're in is and all that. But now, Alhamdulillah, I think you, thank you. You ask a lot of very good questions. And I think we touched on everything, honestly. I think my headset died. Oh my gosh. Oh, no, no, we're good. Okay. But yeah, Alhamdulillah. Thank you. I appreciate you having me, honestly. You like, like my headset. It's not, yeah, it hasn't I need died to once. Just make it more simple. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's all you need. But, I think um, it's tangled up here and the other one I uh, couldn't use it because it didn't have the plastic thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, Alhamdulillah but uh, honestly like thank you so much may Allah reward you and everyone that, like everyone like you the videos you guys make have such a big impact of course and it's very inspiring even to people like me like who you probably would 
you know, not that I'm anything special, but people are pro- like, like they were shocked when you made your video. People don't think someone like me who is a game or has a couple million subscribers is watching that with videos. You know what I'm saying? But like, mm. it's something that has, that has made me a better Muslim over the years is any video, a lot of videos, with hundred views, a thousand views, anything about Islam that you're putting out into the world, it can help, you know, so much. And I don't know, just oh. thank you. For, thank you for having me. The audience too, that you have, like, I love, I'm, I'm in this, this YouTube world you guys are in. That's my whole recommended page on YouTube. I'm just always clicking around and reading and it's, it's nice. Just really cool. So it's cool to be able to talk to that audience and inshallah, like we all benefit from this and yeah, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. No, mashallah, bro. Uh, thank you. May Allah increase you, bless you. It's all well and good. What, what sometimes uh, some people uh, may proclaim about their religion, but it mm. doesn't really affect them too much. Although it doesn't decrease that, mashallah, it's mm. all well and good. But when somebody else proclaims it on a bigger platform, when they have, of course, we do say there's a potential to lose, uh, but the potential to gain, bro, is just so much from yeah. uh, from Islam. And although, of yeah. course, we do emphasize that, look, this is risky and don't speak about that and don't speak about this. But you've spoken yeah. about the two things that, let's face it, are you know, big taboos for people when the Palestine issue and, uh, of course, uh, Islam and stuff like that. But, yeah. bro, I promise if there are other people that are in your position, uh, this uh, and and doing this, mashallah, spending your life, even if you're earning less, even if you're yep. doing less, but what you're doing will have barakah in it. And not only will you have peace and tranquility in this world, or even if you do get trials, those trials, you'll be able to overcome them. Those trials sure. won't destroy you. And uh, mashallah, it will help your hair after also. And the fact that mashallah, bro, you're, You've uh, started that journey, like uh, we will we'll speak off camera as well, bro. But mm. like, uh, I, w- I want you to know um, that you you have a friend in me, you have a friend in us. Thank Any you. issue that you have or anything, we we, we will discuss, inshallah, and uh, inshallah, other people become more confident in their faith also, and uh, yeah, definitely learn about their faith. And yeah, man. Inshallah. Thank you. And I think one last point, sorry, is uh, something like you said, there's that fear sometimes of like, oh, I'm going to ruin an opportunity of myself or whatever. Alhamdulillah, like, I just don't, you know, it's, again, it's been easier for me because the position I'm in as like one of the owners of my organization, who can, who can fire me, who can, <laughs> who can get, mm. you know, like, alhamdulillah, no one can really, I, I know it's easy Again, I'm speaking from a point of privilege. Like a lot of people, like really maybe it can hurt their career to do specific things. And like you said, there's a balance. You're going to have to know when to do it or when, I don't know. It's it, People have their situations and inshallah, everyone finds a way to, 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 to do that. But I think another big issue is for some people like myself, I also like, like you said too, you get worried about intentions sometimes and you don't want to be hypocritical. And like, and I think it's like, there's some, truth in that and there's something to be very very conscious of but it's also part of like some wish wish from the shaitan for sure yes. that like for me a lot of the times i'm like uh i don't want to speak on the this part of islam because i'm not even perfect you know but you're never going to be perfect no. you're never going to be where your brain thinks you need to be so like inshallah my intentions are always the best inshallah you are rewarded for everything you say mashallah it seems like you are very aware of your intentions and that's just one thing to just be again being aware of like before thing you is, do bro, something what but... they say about intentions is before doing a task you you know do your intention at the beginning in the middle of it you do your intention again and then at the end you do your intention again yeah um so it's it's constantly rectifying and asking yourself and you know friend groups uh also yeah. help but one analogy comes to mind which is uh, a, there was a muslim who was drunk and then he had a non-muslim friend and as as he was able as he was going to take another swig of the alcohol, he said he just paused and he said to his non-Muslim friend, he goes, "You know, I really shouldn't be doing this." And he goes, "Why?" He's like, "How? Oh, because my religion tells me not to." That's all he said. And then he took a swig, and then they carried on. But yeah. that that thought really festered in his head, and he said uh, that non-Muslim. He said, "I went and I said, which religion is this?" 
that's telling yeah. you to stay away from alcohol because I've already known out. I've always known that it's wrong, that's but bad. yeah, of course, other faiths they, you know, it's it's within like Christianity they drink wine and and stuff like that. Yeah, it's yeah. within their kind of culture. So he researched Islam, and then he he really kind of felt uh, close to it. Uh, he felt a strong affinity to it, and he eventually accepted Islam. And yeah. then not only did he accept Islam. He then went back and, <laughs> and then gave dawah to his, his alcohol drinking Muslim what. friend, and then yeah. helped him as well. Yeah. So, bro, sometimes no, you don't know what what you're you put right. out there. Mm. Well, are you right? Sorry, to, not to cut you off, but no, no, like go for it. it, it again, that's something to go back to your question. If I talk to myself younger, like, so why I would be so much more vocal about being Muslim and stuff? It's like, it's. You don't like, I don't know. There's so much benefit from it. Even a lot of my guys I lived with, they would always be like, man, I respect so much how you don't drink or you don't party. I'm like, it's not me. It's just Islam. And they're just wow. like, there's that fitra, you know, that like everyone's like, that makes sense. That I've seen that so much in my experience. It's crazy. So like, it, it really is, like you said, very important. But again, it, it, even me coming on this, well, Allahi, like I thought about messaging you after I saw your video and I was just like, I don't like, I just feel weird. Cause I'm like, mm, like, am I like, I know I don't, I'm not coming here to like make myself look cool at all or good or if anything. Like I hope nobody I know watches this video. I, some of my friends messaged me your video. I'm like, I didn't even reply to them. I'm like, yeah, yeah. It's like, I, it is that constant battle that you're like, Oh, am I doing this for the wrong reason? Whatever. And it's a good thing, but also sometimes it's, it goes overboard and then you end up not doing good things because mm. you convince yourself, you know, like it's, it's part of the shaitan's, little game for sure so it's just like you gotta as long as you know in your heart what, what you're doing is for the right reason like don't let things stop you you know and and yeah. I, I said the last thing but this is the last thing i'm gonna keep going you have to stop me but <laughs> the last thing i'll say is it's the same thing for people that like that guy that was drinking you reminded me or people that don't pray right people feel like oh i already haven't prayed for five years like i can't just start now or like even mm. me let's say like i'm praying in the masjid or wherever with a group of friends and then like people get up to pray sunnah and then i'm just like well i don't usually pray sunnah at home so i don't mm. want to pray sunnah and feel like oh look at him. i don't want people to look at me praying sunnah and think i'm a good muslim and, you know it's like a disease you get that happens to me still a lot it's so, like sometimes i just want pray sunnah because i'm like dude i don't even pray sunnah at home i'm not going to pray in front of these people but do you see how bad that is like you know mm. what i'm saying so it's just like that's like a mental battle, but like you got to figure that out as well and navigate it and not let it stop you from doing good. Cause at the end of the day, like nothing's more important than just doing good, obviously, you know? So yeah, Alhamdulillah. Yeah. No, hundred percent It is, it is definitely a battle. And, and sometimes, uh, you know, it's ironic that you mentioned the, the Sunnah thing. I remember after Iftar, uh, I wanted to pray uh, Salatul Awabin and I was like, um, I don't want to do it in front of people. So I'll just go yeah. right to the back, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, right yeah. to the back in the corner and just pray there or just go behind the door and, yeah. and, and just you, like, try there. to hide. Yeah. It's like, you feel weird for like, it's a, it's a very, it's an unfortunate situation. Like that the society's in like here again, I don't know if it is where you, and you, if it's this bad and in, in Europe, but like, I'm sure it is, but like, sometimes like you just don't, you get looked at, oh, this guy's so religious. Like, it's a bad thing. And it's it's sad. But, like, you also don't want to do specific things or talk about specific things. You don't want people to look at you like, it's weird. It's like, a, subhanAllah, it's such a weird reality. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. I'm yeah, I think here, yeah, alhamdulillah, it's not that bad. It's just that um, you don't want people to look at you and go, oh, uh, mashallah, he's, he's, he's pious. But yeah, in yeah, reality, exactly. you've yeah. done whatever you've got whatever's going on and you just want that alone time especially when you're on social media you want to have some deeds that are just private between you and allah that's yeah, what yeah, some of, of the scholars suggest to the people that are online they say look yeah because you're online and mashallah people see you doing videos and stuff like that is good to do some things in private private that's yeah. just for for you and allah but i think one thing that i would probably say is um yeah when when people look at you and they're like oh he's pious and he's this and that uh i think mashallah it's uh it's definitely a, a good starting point um a good kind of conversational point because <clears throat> like you said the main thing is to call towards allah and sometimes maybe at the start your intentions might be a bit weak but inshallah over time they'll become solid there needs yeah. to be some sort of starting point i guess oh definitely well def 100 percent 
hundred percent, inshallah. So, bro, Jazakallah Khair. It's uh, yeah, been really yeah. good, and I think the way it's going, man, uh, it's maybe <laughs> I think we could have carried on uh, much longer. Yeah, we could be here for a couple hours for sure, oh, inshallah. Yeah, definitely, well, definitely. I really, really enjoyed it. Like I said, I don't really make content. I have never, I've never honestly reached out to any YouTuber and like ask to do a video with them the way I messaged you. But like, alhamdulillah, it's, to me, it's like, it's a refreshing opportunity. It's like, I've made content for like 10 years now, but this is just like when I made a little, I made an Arabic channel for a while. And it's just like, it's nice to connect with Muslims. Honestly, Wallahi, it's, there's nothing like it. Alhamdulillah. So thank you for allowing me to connect it's, with it's, you and the audience. It's our honor, bro. You've made a friend in in myself and uh, with, with with the community, inshallah. And, thank uh, you so much. Yeah, Jazakallah khair. Thank you. Well, yeah, may Allah reward you and inshallah the Dat was seen continues to grow and you guys Amen. millions of viewers and all good deeds, inshallah. Inshallah. Amen. Thank you Amen. so much.